I'm going to close this. Is it all right? Nothing will happen. No. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, well, first, I'd like to say how delighted I am to be here, to be back in Venice, and to be back in the university, Kafirkari, which I've visited a number of times in the past. And I'm also very moved by the very kind welcome from the, from the representatives of the city, the region, and the university, and, the, and the, also the business community here. Um, I would like to thank Mr. Carraro for his very kind introduction. Uh, I'm very grateful. I've been asked to speak uh, on the GDP, the gross domestic product. I'll speak presently on that subject, particularly on its limitations and the need to go beyond it. But I don't want to begin there, since underlying that subject lies a more basic issue that needs to be addressed to place the debates on the GDP in a fuller context. The first question concerns whether there is any need to have any kind of measure of overall performance of economic achievements and failures for the society as a whole. What's the purpose of seeking such a measure? What motivates the devising of some collective economic indicator, and why are we at all interested in this measurement exercise? The primary answer to these questions relates to the fact that we have good reasons to be interested in what's going on in the economic sphere of the society and what is being achieved and what is not being achieved in the economy. The assessment of collective living standards must be, in one way or another, an aggregation of the living standards of the people involved. That's a very basic recognition to bear in mind. Furthermore, our lives depend on the economic performance of the collectivity to which we belong. Our lives individually depend on the economic performance of the collectivity to which we belong. And there's every reason to ask, how is our collectivity doing in the economic field? People who belong to a more prosperous society, which offers more opportunities than others do to their members, can have some advantages that members of less thriving societies do not. Being born, for example, in Italy or France, rather than in Ethiopia or Mozambique, could be an economic advantage. This way of motivating the search for indicators of economic success and failure, and of economic progress and decline, has the great merit of placing our lives, our opportunities, our freedoms, at the center of the stage, in looking for something that surrounds us, namely the economic state of the nation or of the community to which we belong. Indeed, even as we look for collective performance, our ultimate interest lies in the lives of people who make up the collectivity. An economy is judged in this perspective not as something that is an end in itself, but in terms of its role in the lives of people who belong to that economy. So it is important to concentrate not on aggregating the production of commodities or resources, but on taking note of the quality of the lives of the persons involved. Obviously, people's lives do depend on goods and services. But not only on that, nor in a simple, straightforward, straightforward way. Issues of distributional inequality, as well as the difficult question of conversion of commodities into quality of life, raise many difficult questions that have to be addressed. The distinction between ends and means is thus central to addressing questions of measurement of aggregate performance of an economy. If we see with clarity the need to relate the performance of an economy to the lives that people can lead, then we are well placed, I would argue, to motivate our search for aggregate economic measures and even to address the question, GDP or beyond. The tension between the commodity-centered view and the human life-centered assessment of aggregate achievement is a very important one to understand. 
And this contrast is indeed a plausible, plausible starting point for a critique of the GDP. I've been involved recently working in a commission appointed by President Sarkozy of France, as Mr. Carl mentioned, um, along with Joseph Stiglitz, who served as the chair, and Jean-Paul Fitoussi, who supervised the work, along with many other distinguished economists, like um, Ned Felt, Daniel, Daniel Kahneman, and others, um, and, and, and a very distinguished group, I thought. Um, I served as the advisor of the commission. This work was initiated by the strong and I believe insightful conviction of President Sarkozy of France to go beyond standard measures of living standard, such as the GDP and GNP. Let me try to present briefly the approach that we took in the commission. Our report was unanimous, and then also discuss the fact that individually we had something we had, each of us, somewhat different judgments on what should get priority. It was right that the Commission included all the alternative approaches that have some plausibility, but it is also important that we individually explain what our own respective priorities are and why. We need to think about each of the plausible approaches to go beyond the GDP the need for an inclusive search is strong, but the present arguments, but also present arguments, uh, uh, we individually arrive at through our own scrutiny rather than as a member of the group. As I have argued in an essay published more than a quarter century ago, a paper called The Living Standards, which came out in the Oxford Economic Papers in 1984, there are three general approaches to the notion of the standard of living of a person that compete for attention, seen respectively as one, economic opulence, two, happiness and utility, three, capability and freedom. I shall discuss them each. But I shall begin by mentioning that I do not regard the three to be equally valid indicators of living standards. However, in the work generated by the commission appointed by President Sarkozy on social measurement, we decided to be inclusive rather than exclusive, and the Stiglitz Commission's report made room for each of these approaches, and that was, I believe, the right approach to take for this commission of many people with diverse view, and as the advisor to the commission and also as a member, I strongly um, um, uh, are good for that view. Uh, 